Is this on? There. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to First Maybank Church of Methodist Church of Maybank. If you're a first time visitor, please fill out the yellow card that you'll find in the front of your pew. And if you have a prayer request, please fill that blue card out. And you can put these in the offertory plate or hand it to an usher. We have quite a few announcements today. There is a nomination committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow, September 16th at 6 p.m. A sign-up sheet for cookies and brownies is on the table in the narthex for Love's Outreach Picnic on September 21st. The silent auction board for Lord's Acre opens on September 22nd. Please remember to put out your yard signs to advertise for Lord's Acre. If you have signed up for a basket item for Lord's Acre, those items are due today, so baskets can be completed. The shopping cards for Christmas shoe boxes are in the foyer. Please see Leanne Brazil for questions. A reception and service are scheduled for Red Wisnet on September 21st here at the church. The reception is from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. and the service is at 2 p.m. If you would like to help with light refreshments for the reception, please contact Sharon Underwriter. Please help fill out our baskets in the narthex for the God's Helping Hand food drive. The basket will be in the narthex and through the end of September. Now please review your bulletins for the information about events, meetings, and programs. And now Scott Daniels has a very short message. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to give you a quick message about Love's Outreach for this coming Saturday. Uh, it is going to be an abbreviated Love's Outreach. And when I see abbreviated, we're going to do a drive-through like we used to do when COVID was going on with lunch boxes that the people can just drive through and keep moving. So we won't be setting the park up with tables and chairs. We won't have drinks. We won't have the drink table, the desserts, or anything like that. We'll be handing out the, the hygiene bags. We'll be handing out the box lunches. So for those of you that participate in serving, you will not be needed to, to be there so that you can participate in whatever needs they may need you here at the church for the funeral arrangements and getting ready for the funeral. So we just wanted to let you know, Sue and Richard and myself and Norman and Larry McDowell will take care of what needs to happen at the park and uh, the rest of you can concentrate on Red and his family here at the church. So thank you. And now let's worship together.
The scripture this morning is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, much more fine than gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from the presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. And now we have a brief Lord's Acre moment by Sarah Lynn Adams. Good morning. My name is Sarah Lynn Adams, and this will be my 14th Lord's Acre. My favorite part is the friendship and closeness the youth gains during the, during the lock-ins. Scaring the boys has been my personal favorite. Over the years, I've watched our group become closer, and for that, I'm forever thankful. Thank you.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, our hearts are full of gratitude. You are the source of all blessings. As we present our offerings, may these gifts extend the work of your kingdom in your church, our community, and throughout the world. You have lovingly created. We give with joy, rooted in the unwavering faithfulness of your promises. In your name we pray, amen. Join me now in professing our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. Heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
may be seated. Kiddos, come on down to the front. What happened? Huh? Anna fell? You okay? Them shoes, huh? Them shoes you slip? How y'all doing? Okay. I'm gonna break the rules. Hey, have y'all ever, have y'all ever uh, been told to do something a certain way and you didn't do it that way? Okay, all right, all right. Did y'all get in trouble? Okay. So Elena Bennett, you know, she sits right over here. Y'all know Elena, right? Elena, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Okay. She's not here today, but yesterday was her birthday. Okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn around, look at that camera up there, and yell, Happy Birthday, Elena. One, two, three. Happy Birthday, Elena. Okay, y'all can turn back around. voice. I just want you to know that. I thought I'd get up there and kind of mess her up and you no. Know, there wasn't no messing that soprano voice up. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me call your daddy. Okay. Mom, what do kids play when they can't play with a phone? What do you say? Knives? What? You throw knives at each other's feet? I don't know about these teachers' kids. You know, when, when my kids were growing up, everybody was told to watch out for the preacher's kid. I guess we need to watch out for the teacher's kid. Okay, what do kids play when they can't play with a phone? Imaginary friends. What? Never mind? Yeah. Tic tac toe. You're not going to get this one. It's a game. <laughs> you ready? Y'all ready? Board games. Get it? Do you get it? Did you really? I, well, see, that's what you get for whispering. When you're deaf like I am, that's a whisper. What? Do y'all get it, board games? You're bored to tears? How many of you are perfect? How many of you have nothing wrong with you in your life?
Really? So, so there's nothing wrong with you if I ask your mother <laughs> if she ever has any problems or issues with you, she's going to say, no, she's the perfect angel. She's going to say that. <laughs> Leah, remember you're in church. What? I said, I taught them lying is a big sin and I don't approve. <laughs> lying is a big sin and she doesn't approve. Oh, you know what? How many of us have ever told a, a lie or a non truth? Okay. <laughs> um, how many, put your hands down. How many of you? have, let's see, stolen something. <laughs> okay, put your hands down. Hey, we may have, we may uh, solve a bunch of mystery crimes in, in the city of Maybank here. <laughs> How many of you have said something ugly or negative to somebody else? <laughs> Sweetie, there's no way you have been that mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, How many of you have made uh, uh, your brother or sister or uh, parents cry. <laughs> okay. How many of you have cheated? Don't. Boy, I'll pinch your head off. Uh huh. Uh, cheated on a test. <laughs> How many of you have disobeyed mom and dad? <laughs> See, y'all have it so easy now. If my mother had done that to me back when I was your age, there wouldn't have been any getting mad or getting yelled at. My mama would have slapped me through the wall for not obeying. Anybody else? Um, let's see. How many of you um, How many of you have put a hole in the wall? Okay. How many of you wish that you could be better? And when I say that, a better student, a better child to your parents, uh, a better Christian. Okay, put your hands down. You see, sometimes we come like this piece of paper was, you know, just there's nothing wrong. But then again, we have things in our lives that, that uh, we, we're not proud of. And so Jesus... takes those things away. So here we have all the things that we wish we could get rid of. But in the same sense, we, we want to be similar to everybody else. Well, that can't happen because God didn't make you like everybody else. God made you unique, just like a snowflake. So what? 
Every snowflake is different. Every one of them. There's no two alike. Just like we are not like everybody else. God created us that way so that we would be unique and we could touch someone else's life. So I want you to think about this and remember this. Don't put your feet on each other. Remember that. <laughs> God has a purpose for you in, in this world and in your life. And it is to touch someone else. Let God cut out all the impurities using Jesus and Jesus' blood on your life. So that you can be that one unique person in someone else's life to lead them to Jesus. Okay? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, Dear Lord thank you for making me unique. Thank you for making me unique. Lead me, lead me to, that person to that person that needs your changes, needs your changes. in their life. Help me, Help me to be a model Christian, to be a model Christian for, them. for them. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. You can go to Children's Church.
may be seated. Okay, um, just a quick reminder, uh, Delpha Potter, where are you at? I'm lost here. Oh, there she is. Delpha Potter, it's good to have you back here today uh, to uh, celebrate uh, Bill's memory. Uh, that will be at, at 2 o'clock at Mi Pablito. Anybody that doesn't know where that's at, that's that blue Mexican restaurant right down the road. Uh, two o'clock, uh, everyone's invited to that. Um, God has blessed you this week. Say amen. amen. If he hadn't said on me, we all paid attention, didn't we? So tell me where you saw Jesus this week. Friends. Friends. Football games yesterday. Protection of our family. Protection of our family. Choir practice. Choir practice. In the NICU in, in the Dallas, uh, we had our second baby, grand, great grandbaby born, and he was early, of course, but he didn't weigh one pound like the first baby. He weighed four pounds. So <laughs> he will stay in NICU until his birthday, which was. November 1st, but he's doing well. Okay. Awesome. My sister's successful foot surgery. Your sister's successful surgery? Yes. Hospital. Hospital. The church family. Working with Kali Maldonado. I have a great grandson, oh. Caleb, uh, Josh, and Faith are his parents, and he's beautiful. He's perfect. <laughs> the great grandbaby or Josh? <laughs> great grandbaby. Great grandbaby. Congratulations. Where do we need to see God this coming week? Everywhere. Everywhere. I got a couple of updates for you. Uh, Medley uh, had her knee surgery and she's home. Everything's going good. Uh, went and saw Mike Moore. He is doing very well. He cannot wait to get home so that he can get back to church to see everybody here. Uh, Stan Johnston is, is still recovering from his his surgery um who else have i forgot think that oh uh john manning uh, he's home um relaine told uh sent me a message this morning saying that that he was better yesterday and today uh so continue prayers for for john um, Debbie Precor, okay, here we go. She was released from Tyler. She has some procedures that she needs to have done. The only place they can do one of them, and it has to be done first before the rest can be done, is Medical City, Dallas. They could not get her into a room. So they released her. This is coming from John. John said he was gonna load her up, take her to a hotel in Dallas so that if her blood pressure dropped, which he said with him it will, <laughs> he can take her in through the emergency room and they have to put her in a room and start the process. So um, continue prayers for Debbie. Uh, John asked for prayers because he's not a good nurse. Uh, and so uh, uh, prayers for them. We also need to lift up Bob Allen, who's in extreme back pain. 
Roger and Alice Barker have been placed on hospice care. Uh, Kenneth McBride uh, going to urgent care. His, he's having issues uh, breathing and talking uh, with his asthma. I'm sure that there's many, many more that we need to be in prayer for. So let's do it now. Let's pray. Almighty well, and gracious Father, we thank you for the beautiful day you've given us, Father. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave his life for us. Father, we thank you for all the answered prayers that we receive, those that are answered the way we want them, and those that are answered because you know better. Father, we thank you for being so active in our lives that we're able to ask you now to hear and answer the prayers that we have lifted up to you today. And Father, we know in our humble lives that you have begun to answer those prayers even before we asked. And so, Father, we praise you for that. Father, as your church, we continue to ask for guidance. We continue to ask for clarity. And we continue to ask for your mercy. Father, as we go out into the world as your disciples, we, we want to follow where you lead us, that we might make a difference. And as Paul said, save a few. We pray this in your son's name, who taught us to pray like this. Our Father.
did the thumper thing. <laughs> Will you please rise as we read from the Word of God? Very simple. John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Father, open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and our ears, that as you speak to us today, we will receive those words and put them into action in our lives. And may the words from my mouth be a blessing unto you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you have a bulletin? How many of you read that bulletin before you sat down for worship service? Okay, for those of you who are new, <coughs> visiting, or haven't been to church in a long time, my name is not Dr. Leah Hitty Gregory. <laughs> Dr. Hitty Gregory was supposed to be here to lead us in worship today. On Friday, she contacted me and let me know that she had pneumonia, but she was planning on being here. Later that evening, she sent me a text and said her husband had put his foot down and told her 47 hours is not 48, and that she would not be going anywhere to preach on Sunday. That being said, gentlemen, we still have hope that we can rule a little bit in our household. <laughs> How many of you love the darkness? A few years ago, um, I had a new deer lease, and I had gone out, and I had set everything up, and, and man, I was ready to go, and, and, and oh, it was, it was, it was going to be great. I had these grand illusions of a 10-point walking in on the very opening day, and me being able to, to end my deer season right then. So the morning, opening morning, I go out. And I drive through the pasture, and I go down, and I'm looking at the tree line, and I mean, it's, it's dark. And I park where I'm supposed to park, and I get out of my truck, and I enter into the woods where I had cleared an opening. And I'm walking along, and I'm walking along, and I'm walking along, and I'm thinking, this is not the trail <laughs> that I have cut out. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe I'm just overreacting because it's, it's dark. I've got a flashlight. Don't ask me why I didn't use it. And I'm walking in, and off to my left, I see something. And I turn and look, and it's a stand. It's not mine. <laughs> I realize that I've gone in on the wrong trail. Don't ask me how that happened, because I had everything down. So I whoop out my flashlight, and I turn it on, and I'm trying to get out of there because it's really dark in those woods. And I get about, I don't know, 15 yards, and the batteries go out on my flashlight. <laughs> and now I've got to try to figure out how to get out of those woods in the <coughs> complete darkness. How many of you like spiders? <laughs> Okay, how many of you like spider webs hung across face level? <laughs> I am trying to book it out of there, and I'm getting hit in face with these 
cobwebs that I don't know what those spiders ate, but them things will make your head pop back. <laughs> I finally get to an area where I can see some light. And I'm thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to be wandering around in these woods getting shot at here in a little bit. And I made it out into the opening of the field where I was parked. And I realized that I am parked in the wrong spot. I should have been about 50 yards the other way and that this opening that I entered into was just like the opening that I had cut through where, where my blind was. That being said, Jesus tells us he is the light of the world and that whoever follows him will never walk in darkness. I could have used some of that light in those woods that morning. So what, was Je what did Jesus mean by this? So years ago, when I was working for the city of Plano, did you, any, any of y'all ever heard of Collin Creek Mall? Big, big mall in Plano. Did you know that there are catacombs of tunnels underneath there? Did you know that you can drive an 18 wheeler in those catacombs underneath Collin Creek Mall? Did you know the further in you go, the darker it gets and you can't figure out where anything is? I did. We had a, a problem in, in, in one of them and we had to figure out where we were and what we were doing. I'm telling you all of this because darkness hinders our lives. Yeah, it's good to be able to have darkness when you sleep at night. But how many times do you wake up in the middle of the night and you start looking around for some type of light so that you can adjust where you are? Angie and I have a, uh, an alarm clock or a clock that shines on the ceiling. And so if I wake up in the middle of the night, that's the first place <coughs> I look so that I can figure out where I am. Now, we've lived in that house almost seven years, and still I have to find where everything is. Darkness is a hindrance in our lives. Satan is the master of hindrance. He is the master of darkness. John 1 tells us how Jesus is the light of the world and he came into the world but, but the world doesn't see him because it still lives in darkness. And then over here in John 8, Jesus says, I am that light. We need light in our lives because light keeps us from being lost. It keeps us from running into things into the dark of the night. I'm sure many of you have gotten up in the dark at night and tripped over a toy <coughs> or the corner of the bed or one of those things that is created by Satan, a jack. Or Nowadays, a Lego. When we have light, we can see things around us. One of the greatest things, I, joys I have about deer hunting is when the sun starts rising over the horizon. Now, that's not that big a deal. 
unless as you're looking, you start seeing the creation that God has created. You get to start seeing the, the greens and, and the browns and, and the little varmints and, and the birds and, and all of God's creation. As it become as light enters into our world on a particular day. The same thing is true about our hearts and our, our spiritual life. Because of sin, we live in darkness. Because of sin, there is no light. And so we fumble around in our lives trying to find the way and we bump into things, obstacles that, that Satan places in front of us. But Jesus wants to be the light that lights up everything, that shows us the goodness that God brings, to show us the saving power, the hope, the grace, the mercy that God brings into our lives when we let the light in. The world has always been full of darkness. And so God sent the light into the world that we might be able to see all the goodness that God offers us. That saving power that will help us never walk in darkness again. It's kind of like going into the woods with a headlamp on with everlasting, ever ready, ever charged batteries. Because Christ lights our way even in the darkest moments of our lives. We can see clearly with Christ as our guide. When Christ is that flood lamp, we can see all around us. But most of all, just like sunrise, right after the darkest part of the night. As Christ rises in our lives, we get to see what God has created. But most of all, we get to see the mercy, hope, and grace that God brings into our lives and offers to us. There are those that are still walking in that darkness, that are still bumping into walls, that are tripping over that Lego that's catching their foot on the bed foot. And they're still searching around and looking and trying to find some type of guiding light. All they have to do is to ask Jesus to be their light. To ask Jesus into their lives so that Jesus can light up their world. For those of us that have seen the light and we are walking in the light, or we have, we have the light present with us, but like me, forget to pull it out of their pocket. I challenge us to be more in the light than what we are. Give God control of our lives.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am that everlasting, God-powered, solar beam in your life. And whoever follows his light will never walk in darkness again and won't get lost in the woods. Let's pray. Gracious God, we, we uh, come before you right now. Some may be coming towards you in darkness and not knowing where they are. Father, there's some of us that need our, our light recharged. Some of us need to remember that we have the light in our life. Whatever the case may be, Father, we, we, we come to you asking that you light our world Take away the darkness, whatever it might be, whatever obstacle that might be out there, whether it is job issue, financial issue, family issue. Father, shine a light on it so that we know how to deal with it. That we might see that without you, that darkness remains. Father, we ask that you allow us to carry your light even further into the world to those who might be searching. Use us as a conduit to reach others so that others may see through your Son. We pray this in your Son's holy name. Amen. Closing hymn is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. This is our hymn of invitation. Anyone who would like to join this church on a transfer of letter from another church, or if you would like to receive Christ as your personal Savior today and profess your faith in Him, you're invited to come as we sing. y'all 
to Billy Moorhead. Billy Moorhead is coming today and said he's tired of walking in the darkness. And so um, he, he is uh, coming back to Jesus. And uh, so, um, Billy, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, do you believe in God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you confess Jesus Christ as Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith is contained in the scriptures? Do you promise according to the grace given you to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as a faithful member of Christ's holy church? Will you be loyal to Christ through the First Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Brothers and sisters, help me welcome Billy. Okay, Billy, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to give the benediction you're going to be right here. Well, we're going to put you right there. You want to say something? Yeah. Just yell. I'm new to the church, and I want to say that our God, our Father, has prayed me. Ever since I was 13, I've been in hell. And I came to the church today because I'm happy that I'm alive. Amen. There's your testimony. <laughs> Y'all come up and, and welcome Billy into the, in the church fam, into our family, and, and uh, uh, rock and roll. Receive this benediction. Go from this place with joy in your heart. Smile on your face and a song on your lips because Jesus is going to put somebody in your path that's walking in darkness. Be that light that God can reach to them. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will place somebody, probably a telemarketer, in your path this week. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.